In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. I think the universe is God. That's what I think. Keep going. I think this idea of God creating the universe is silly. I think the whole thing is God. I think it's it's God in the fact that it's the entire creation of everything that exists that we can measure. Mama All Pacha. of it is the universe. Yes. And if you read the Bible, the Bible talks about in the beginning there was light. Boy, that sounds a lot like the Big Bang. Boy, that sounds a lot like the birth of the universe. I think these fucking people that wrote the Bible were recounting stories that were told down through people that had a scientific understanding of the birth and death of the universe, just like we do now. Mm. Maybe even more than we do now. And then they got hit by asteroids. And then it was thousands of years before civilization reestablished itself. And the stories had been told down, handed down forever and ever. And by the time people wrote them down, they were goofy. And they were goofy, and there's like God created the earth in six days, and the whole story of Adam and Eve. And there's probably a lot to all of it that's true. And it, it's probably a historical record that was told to people that were essentially barbarians that were surviving from the collapse of a superior civilization, superior to what we have today. And there's a lot of real physical evidence of that. There's a lot of archaeological evidence of that. And it seems to be a, a direction that a lot of people are headed into when they understand how often we get hit with asteroids. Somewhere around 11,800 years ago, we got pelted. And it stopped civilization in its tracks. And we had to rebuild from scratch. And the people that survived were probably monsters. Monsters, the Mongols and the fucking hordes and the barbarians. They were the most harsh people because that was the only way you survived because there was no longer a technologically advanced civilization. It was all just barbarism and there's very few animals to eat because there's a nuclear winter because the sky is filled with what, the, the impact of this massive meteor that slams into Earth and kills 70% of all the people. I find this kind of interesting. I'm not gonna say that I necessarily agree with it, but it is an interesting theory that everything is God, not in the sense of a divine being, but as far as, you know, the universe is our creation, basically. It is our creator. I don't really go on the same line of it, but it is a very interesting statement. I used to have this uh, theory a long time ago that the planet itself planet earth is our god i used to think that all the time like basically the planet earth is just this giant plant that consumes us and that planet is god itself earth is god and we nurture we nurture god by feeding it our bodies and recycling properly and things like that as far as our lives go. But it is just a off the wall theory that I had way back in the day. Yes, if you use my version of Snap, you can see the people who live beyond the ice wall on the Snap map. Now, have you ever heard of the Great Ice Ball Earth Theory? This comes from the idea that the Earth is much bigger than what we've been told and that there are other domes of land that exist past vast walls of ice. Now, you've probably never seen this giant map of other domes that exist outside of the Earth. It was created by the author Nos Confundin, who apparently has diaries of people who went beyond the ice wall, and he has all these stories about what all these other lands are, what the types of people who live past them are like. There's even one where it's supposed to be a mirror earth of ours where like there's another version of yourself there and it's the exact same person but everything's reverse of it there's even even an evil area where the the uh, underground people live is called the bal continents it's very interesting it's such a massive massive map and stuff that you just like could never have even thought could even exist at all and then there's this giant, even bigger ice wall all around it. So who knows? What if this is real? I found this extremely interesting. I've never heard of the ice ball planet before. I've heard of, you know, flat earth and us be sur being surrounded by Antarctica and the ice wall. But I never heard of other systems that are just like ours in a way that are within an ice wall of their own and there's so many of them i actually kind of want to find this map 
and uh, look at it a little bit further because that was really cool. I like that a lot. Each section of it has their own sun and moon and things like that. That was really fascinating and very interesting to me. But uh, do I believe it? Not necessarily. I'm not against it, but I would love to see if this is something that a lot more people are talking about because this is my first time ever hearing about it like this. The underscore hillbillies is a TikTok account about a family who talk about their daily lives in the woods and the countryside. If you look at their videos, they never speak about mysterious or creepy things. However, something strange has happened in the woods where their home is. It's like the dogs out in this shit. It's happening again. Dude, what? Huh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sean, the father, hears disturbing howling noises out in the woods. Listen to that. What? I don't know. Dude, why do you think I brought him in the house and run out here? He tells his family to go inside and immediately investigates the noises heard deep in the woods. Listen to that. No more by themselves are they be out here right now. Do, 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 get him in the house. Get him in the house. Well, whatever that noise is, undoubtedly, they are not alone. And Sean, curious about who made that noise, decides to go out and explore with his dogs. After a few minutes or hours of exploring, he finds what appears to be a deep, dark cave. I think we're dealing with something more than what we thought. Yeah, we're filming the new Bigfoot Chronicles, and we found what we've been looking for. Look at this. That goes way back. We gotta get some flashlights. Sean then goes back home and uploads these videos to TikTok, and as the next day comes, he's filming his regular vlog until the same howling voice appears again, and louder than before. Life's about spreading love, so tag three people with that. What the hell? Dude, I know I'm not going crazy. Again. All right, that was clear. And after that, he even set up cameras to catch the thing, but his camera disappeared. Sean also got up one night to hear dogs everywhere in the neighborhood barking at what seemed to be the noises the creature made. This is crazy, and I don't know how to explain this. I, I really don't even want to do this. So I left a camera sitting here to just see if I can catch anything. And this was in place of it. This is some blur weird stuff right here. What the hell? Right there. I put those in the ground to kind of prop the camera up because I forgot my tripod. And now the camera's gone. And it stinks right here bad. Sean then decides to install more cameras to try to catch footage of the thing. And what he catches next is shocking. I've looked to see if I couldn't find the rest of the footage. I cannot find it. The you the the channel that I am pulling this from is not the original channel. Uh, I'll have to go and look and see about their channel because they do mention it. The underscore hillbillies. I would like to know a little bit more about this because that was really interesting. By far one of the best videos I've seen depicting weird phenomenons happening in the woods that seemed genuine. The reactions of the individual were real. Uh, how he was talking to his family and everything. It just seems very genuine. It doesn't seem like it's fake. Even if they are filming a series for Bigfoot, I, I don't know. This just seemed genuine to me. It could definitely be fake. I would like to see them go into that, that cave. I would like to see a little bit more into this. But what do you guys think? Do you know anything about this? And the fact that he left the camera in the woods and when he came back, to find a braided piece of wood around it, that would have, like, made me question so many things. I would have wondered, did someone steal my camera and they're playing with me? Or maybe Bigfoot or some kind of Sasquatch out there did take my camera and just left me a little gift 
in its place and now there's a <laughs> there's a sasquatch out there taking pictures and videos of me and i don't know it so that they can tell their families about humans it's like what's going on here hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this almost every day and it would be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow the git platform github had so much data brought up that they had to bring their own container and here we can see all the data that GitHub has stored. Open source has won. A statement by Nat Friedman, who was the CEO of GitHub. And this vault was assembled in 2021, and it contains an archive of all active public GitHub repositories. I find this really cool. I do not know why they made it look the way they looked. Like on the outside, it looks like it's just from something out of this world. But I know at least probably two, three thousand years into the future when humanity gets through a restart or something, we're going to find that and it's going to be like aliens. I want to ask you guys a question. What makes you think you live on this? Think about it. I want you to think about it. What makes you think that? Is it the pictures that you've seen of Earth from space? All these? Are these why? All these that all look different all the time, have different shaped continents, have different size continents, have different colors, that look completely like drawings? Is this why? Or is it because you see the sun half covered and you know that the Earth is revolving, so that's why you see the sun half covered? But then you can zoom in and see that it's not actually half covered. It's pretty high in the air. And you realize that it only looks half covered because of the atmospheric lensing and perspective. So if it's not those two, maybe it's this. Maybe it's that all the planets are around, right? I mean, NASA says this is what Mars looks like. So, you know, Earth has to look similar. But does Mars really look like this? Amateurs catch Mars looking like this. It's a little different. Looks like it's light shimmering in water. Interesting. Same planet, different telescope, different person, capturing somewhat of the similar thing we're seeing. Maybe it's because you look up and see the sun and see that it's 93 million miles away, so everything they tell us about the solar system has to be accurate, right? How is it 93 million miles away if it's in the clouds? Hmm. Maybe you think you live on a globe because the flight paths prove it, right? Don't all flight paths prove it? I mean, this seems normal, right? You would never just go in a straight line. Let's see what New York to Moscow looks like on a flat Earth map. Line, check this out. The edge of Canada, the edge of Greenland, straight over Iceland, straight over Sweden, and into Moscow. Huh, imagine that. Maybe you think you live on a globe because NASA's gone way up in space and sent pictures back. But this is what their flight path looks like all the time. Does that look like it's going up to space to you? Boats go over the horizon, right? So that, that's why we live on a globe, because a boat goes over and then you can't see it, right? So that's what they teach us from a young age, right? That this, this happens, the boat's going to go over the horizon... If it's going over a curve, you can never zoom back in on it, right? Just like this boat that went out of sight and over the horizon. But then you zoom in, kind of like you do on the sun, and you see it's still there. It's not over any horizon. See, people think that's what's happening. But it's just like the sun, like I said. When something goes away and there's lensing because of the heat from the water or any type of atmosphere, you can't see it anymore. This is how the sun actually goes down. It just goes further away to the point you can't see the light that the sun is giving anymore. And look, we can't see that boat. And then you remove the atmosphere or the lens and it's still right there. Boats aren't going over the horizon. They're just going out of your sight, just like the sun. Star trails, though, right? These prove that the Earth is definitely spinning. As this time-lapse plays, I want to just tell you 
what the Earth is supposedly doing. We are rotating a thousand miles per hour this way. We are traveling 67,000 miles per hour around the sun. We are hurling through the solar system at 400,000 miles per hour and hurling through the universe at 2 million miles per hour. Yet these stars look like they're rotating around us to me. And Polaris never moves. How is that possible? Speaking of not being able to see things, we know we live on a globe because you can't see things because they're too far away and they're over the curve, right? Well, the globe model tells us that from 60 miles away, you shouldn't be able to see 2,400 feet because of the curve. Well, the Willis Tower is only 1,400 feet, and this picture was taken from 60 miles away. So I want to ask you again, why do you think you live on a globe? Because when you look into it, you realize all the reasons you think you do, they're explainable in different reasons that actually make more sense when you measure, repeat, and observe it over and over again. So I ask you, do you live here? And you know what? Obviously, I'm saying all this just for entertainment purposes. I never seen someone see something go over the horizon and then zoom in and then it's still above the horizon. That was a really interesting thing to me. I've not seen that personally because sometimes when you do see things go over the horizon or over the horizon, is it really or is it just an optical illusion of distance? And being that we have technology now that can actually see things at a greater distance, we're able to see these things now like we were not before. Well, again, the tops of the rods produce the familiar traveling wave pattern. But suppose I take out every alternate rod. Will you then still be able to see the traveling wave? On this occasion, I think you would claim that you could, and that you would say that it was moving in the same direction as it was before. But suppose I take out every other again. Now, can you still say which way the wave is traveling? I think you'll agree that this is now much more difficult. And perhaps now you realize that what you were doing before was to join the tops of the rods mentally with an imaginary line. And it was only this line which was moving. Now, we're going to go back in easy stages from this purely mechanical model to the linear induction motor. And the first step is to go from what is purely mechanical to what is electromechanical, like this. Instead of the rods, we're going to have a row of steel strips, and each of these strips is springy. Instead of moving them up and down with cams, we're going to use this row of electromagnets. When I switch alternating current into these magnets, it's going to cause the strips to be attracted and repelled alternately. And when I switch on the whole row, you should see a reproduction of our mechanical traveling wave along these strips. First of all, I'm going to magnetize the strips by passing direct current into this big coil at the back, which I switch on now. Now I switch on the alternating current. Now comes the second stage in which we take away all the strips and place a track on top of the magnets. Built into this track is a steel strip which, whose purpose is to strengthen the magnetic field. And now I can place a slab of aluminium in at one end, switch on the alternating current, and we are back with our linear induction motor and our moving magnetic river. You can illustrate the difference between a linear induction motor and an ordinary electric motor if you draw poles on a piece of paper, like this. This, at the moment, represents a linear machine. But if I roll it up and make a cylinder,
Then the magnetic field moves round and round, and we've made our conventional household motor. But suppose I were to roll up the paper in a different way, like this. Now the magnetic field travels along the axis of the cylinder. We have made an electromagnetic gun. Now, in practice, it's very easy to construct one of these guns because all you need is a whole row of coils placed next to each other like this. And each coil is simply um, a coil of wire wrapped on a bobbin. The moving part is going to be a steel rod with a copper sleeve on the outside of it. I put it into the barrel and switch on. The missile emerges at about 100 miles an hour and goes quite a long way into the wood. We can try more sophisticated darts. This one has alternate rings of steel and copper on a steel core. Let's see if this is any better. A little, if anything. A plain steel rod does remarkably well because steel, remember, is a conductor of electricity as well as of magnetism. This tubular motor is not the most efficient of linear induction machines. I used it to show you another way in which you can use this amazing force of induction, which appears as almost artificial gravity. I really like this video because it demonstrates what we could do if we were in an area with no gravity. For example, if we were in space, this is how that they would have to utilize space warfare more than probably anything else unless it was like energy weapons such as lasers and things like that because this would work off a magnetic field and be able to shoot. Basically, it's a rail gun. That's what it is. But um very interesting. I really like this because I have a feeling that this is still being studied up in space. I, I just know it has to be because this is by far one of the most advanced ways of having war in space because once we get into space and we become an intergalactic species that war won't happen and they're already planning for it. So that's kind of what I think and watching a video like this just makes me even think it more that that kind of stuff is happening up there. What do you guys think? Never cut food on a glass cutting board. So if I cut food on a glass cutting board, then my knife is going to be dull. If I cut food on a plastic cutting board, then I'm going to fill my body with microplastics and then I'm never going to not be infertile. And if I cut food on a wooden cutting board, then it's going to get moldy. And you can never clean it properly because all the raw chicken juice and stuff from raw meat is just going to stay in there forever. How am I supposed to cut my food? There are no more options! I mean, you could use a couple of different things. Glass, first of all, is not bad. It just does dull your knives, but as long as you have a knife sharpener, you're fine. But if you don't want to use a knife sharpener, then other alternatives would be either parchment paper or a stone cutting board. I have a marble cutting board in my kitchen. That's what I use normally. And I do have a knife sharpener that comes with my knife kit, so I, I, there's all different types of ways of using a cutting board that's not your traditional style of cutting board. A stone one, probably the best bet. If that's the case for me, in 2014 I'd still be working. <laughs> that would suck, you wake up and you're just on your lunch break or something at work. That, whew, man, mind blown. Alright guys, I'm gonna end the video here, and with that being said, have a good day.